In the late 1800s, a tranquil town nestled on New Bedford, Massachusetts' coast became the unlikely backdrop for an extraordinary tale of revenge. Our main character, Benjamin Ben Clark, a seasoned whaler, was renowned in his community for his unshakable courage and exceptional seamanship. It was the year 1850 when Ben embarked on a fateful voyage aboard the whaling ship, the Essex Explorer. The Essex Explorer, a steadfast whaling ship, carried a crew of 21 members on that fateful journey. Whether seasoned or new to the trade, each sailor played a pivotal role in the ship's mission to hunt the elusive sperm whales. The crew members were a diverse ensemble, hailing from various corners of New Bedford and beyond. At the ship's helm was Captain Jonas P. Johnson, an experienced mariner with a reputation for his resourcefulness and sound judgment. His leadership was vital in guiding the crew through the challenges of a whaling expedition. First mate Benjamin Ben Clark, our main character, was the linchpin of the crew. His years of experience at sea had honed his skills, and his unwavering courage earned the respect of all aboard the Essex Explorer. Ben's role extended beyond his official duties, as he had become a mentor and protector to the younger, less seasoned crew members. His name was synonymous with bravery, a testament to his unwavering resolve. The rest of the crew was a mosaic of individuals, each contributing a unique skill set to the expedition. Among them were seasoned harpooners, able-bodied seamen, and greenhorns eager to prove themselves. From diverse backgrounds, these men were bound by the common purpose of harvesting the precious sperm whales for their oil. While the whaling industry held the promise of financial reward, it was no voyage for the faint-hearted. The crew members toiled relentlessly, facing difficult conditions and the unpredictable temperament of the sea. Each bore the weight of their shared goal securing a profitable whale oil cargo. This creature, a leviathan of the deep, held a coveted place in the hearts of whalers and was the source of their livelihood. The Essex Explorer was a formidable vessel, having weathered many treacherous voyages. It was a ship well-equipped to hunt the elusive sperm whales, boasting an experienced crew well-provisioned for the arduous journey ahead. As they set sail from the picturesque harbor of New Bedford, the crew could not foresee the extraordinary events that would soon unfold. The vast and serene Atlantic Ocean stretched before them, promising untold riches in the form of precious whale oil. Sperm whales, with their vast size and formidable strength, were considered the titans of the deep. These creatures were known to be generally peaceful, driven by their pursuit of squid rather than aggression. It was said that they occasionally mistook other mammals for seals or prey, leading to rare, unintended confrontations with whalers. With their massive brains and complex social structures, they were creatures of remarkable intelligence. These majestic beings were known to form stable social groups and remember past encounters, mainly if they felt threatened. As the Essex explorer ventured farther from shore, the crew's excitement was tempered by the knowledge of the sea's unpredictability. They remained vigilant, knowing that their pursuit of the sperm whale was not without its risks. The crew of the Essex Explorer had been at sea for months. Their pursuit of sperm whales had led them far from the familiar shores of New Bedford. As the ship ventured deeper into the open ocean, the whalers faced a challenge that tested their mettle and understanding of the natural world. With a presence that commanded awe, this colossal sperm whale approached the ship with an unmistakable sense of purpose. The crew, seasoned by their encounters with these leviathans, recognized the profound difference in this behemoth's demeanor. It wasn't a casual encounter, it was a confrontation. The calm ocean waters did not indicate the tempest about unfolding. As the crew of the Essex Explorer watched in amazement, the massive sperm whale, with tenfold fury and vengeance in its aspect, made its move. It surged forward with an intensity that was nothing short of extraordinary. The impact was like a thunderous collision. The ship shuddered and recoiled as if it had struck a rock. The experienced and battle-hardened crew were terrorized as the creature's sheer force grievously wounded their ship. The vessel that had once been their sanctuary became a battleground between man and Leviathan. Yet the most shocking revelation was to come. Despite the devastating strike, the colossal sperm whale did not retreat into the ocean's depths. Instead, it circled for a second assault displaying an unwavering determination to confront its adversaries. The Essex Explorer was under siege by a colossal and relentless adversary. 
The whale's aggression was not born of hunger or mere threat. It was as if the great Leviathan harbored a deep-seated vendetta that defied explanation. It became evident that this was no ordinary encounter with a sea creature. As the colossal sperm whale continued its relentless assault on the Essex Explorer, the crew found themselves locked in a harrowing struggle for survival. The men who had embarked on this challenging journey had no clue that they were on the brink of a nightmare that would ultimately claim the lives of twelve of their own. The whale's second strike was as ferocious as the first, with even greater force and fury. The Essex Explorer, already grievously damaged, was further ravaged by the Leviathan's relentless assault. The ship shuddered and creaked under the onslaught of the vengeful beast. Amidst the chaos and mayhem, the crew members fought valiantly to keep their ship afloat. They worked desperately to repair the ship's damaged hull and prevent it from being drawn into the abyss. Yet their efforts were in vain. The immense breach in the ship's structure was beyond repair, and water poured into the vessel. As the Essex explorer succumbed to the unrelenting fury of the sperm whale, the crew made a heart-wrenching decision. With the ship sinking beneath them, they clung to the remaining whaleboats, their only lifeline in the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. With their vessel lost, the crew faced a grim reality. They were adrift in the heart of the ocean, thousands of miles from land, with only their fragile whaleboats as a means of survival. The ordeal ahead was unimaginable hardship as they grappled with the harsh elements, the scarcity of provisions, and the ever-present threat of the relentless sea. The crew of the Essex Explorer included 21 members, all of whom had embarked on this whaling expedition with dreams of success and fortune. Yet now they were cast adrift in the vast and unforgiving Atlantic with no immediate hope of rescue. The harrowing days and nights that followed were filled with struggles for sustenance and navigation. The crew had to decide on their course of action, whether to head for the nearest islands, a thousand miles downwind to the west, or embark on an epic journey of almost 3,000 miles to reach the South American mainland. Only eight of the 21 crew members aboard the ill-fated ship survived the grueling ordeal ahead. This tragic tale of the Essex Explorer would come to symbolize the indomitable spirit of those who confront the relentless forces of nature. The legacy of the 12 fishermen who perished in the tragedy would serve as a reminder of the unpredictable and formidable power of the natural world. In the vast expanse of the North Atlantic, where the horizon seemed to stretch endlessly in all directions, a sense of tranquility enveloped the crew of the maritime vessel, the Aurora. Captain William Henderson, a weathered mariner with a lifetime of stories etched into his sun-kissed skin, led this motley crew of dedicated sailors on the 14th of May, 1999. The Aurora was a stout and reliable vessel known for its many successful voyages across the open sea. The crew, each with their unique role, had learned to navigate the fickle waters of the North Atlantic with skill and determination. Among the crew were two individuals whose destinies would soon intertwine with an unexpected and formidable force of nature. John Mitchell, a seasoned sailor known for his fearlessness in the face of the open ocean, had earned the nickname Braveheart among his shipmates. He was a man of few words, but his actions spoke volumes. On the other hand, Emily Turner embodied strength and determination in a world often dominated by men. With a mane of fiery red hair and a spirit as wild as the sea, she had earned the respect of her fellow sailors as the ship's navigator. Her precision and knowledge of the stars had guided the Aurora safely through countless voyages. As they sailed further into the North Atlantic, the crew's eyes were drawn to the tranquil waters. The day was serene with the sun casting a radiant golden path across the rippling surface of the ocean. It was a sight that filled their hearts with a sense of wonder, a fleeting respite from the demanding life of seafaring. Yet the sea was not without its secrets, its mysteries hidden beneath the shimmering waves. Among the creatures that dwelled in these waters, the common minky whale reigned as one of the most enigmatic. With its sleek body and sharply pointed snout, it defied the conventions of its more prominent and reclusive kin. Unlike most whales that chose to remain elusive, the common minke whale often defied convention, approaching ships and revealing itself to those who ventured across its realm. Its tendency to come vessels made it a more visible presence in the vastness of the North Atlantic, a characteristic that both captivated and confounded sailors. 
These gentle giants of the deep, equipped with comb-like baleen plates, were filter feeders, sifting nourishment from the ocean's depths. Fish, krill, and squid comprised their diet, a testament to the abundance of life in the North Atlantic's fertile waters. But as nature's eternal cycle dictated, even the common minke whale had its adversary, killer whales, known for their relentless pursuit of prey. In the present day, whalers cast their eyes upon the common minke whale as one of the most sought-after species. The whaling industry, a lucrative venture in the modern era, had brought this species under the scrutinizing gaze of mariners seeking their fortune in the whale's valuable resources. The crew of the Aurora, however, was not comprised of whalers. They sailed these waters for other purposes, their hearts set on a different destiny, and the common minke whale would soon play a role in their story an unexpected chapter in seafaring life. As the Aurora glided through the calm waters of the North Atlantic, its crew was blissfully unaware of the impending encounter that would soon alter the course of their voyage. A thunderous roar erupted beneath the waves, sending shockwave through the ship's timbers. With their faces twisted in astonishment and fear, the sailors clung to anything that would keep them upright on the heaving deck. In the heart of the explosive turmoil that had erupted, John Mitchell and Emily Turner stood side by side, their eyes wide with disbelief. They were in the epicenter of chaos as the sea around them churned into a frothy rage. The source of the tumult was soon revealed, a behemoth of the deep, a creature so massive that it defied the imagination. It was the common minka whale, a species known for its relatively peaceful nature. Yet at that moment it had transformed into an embodiment of fury. With a colossal breach, the common minke whale erupted from the depths, its massive body soaring like a leviathan of old. The impact of the common minke's breach reverberated through the ship, causing it to sway perilously. Barrels of supplies tumbled and crashed, and rigging groaned under the strain. It was as if the sea itself had unleashed an explosive force in the form of this awe-inspiring creature. Amid the chaos, Emily Turner's navigational instincts kicked in. She knew that their very survival depended on maintaining their course and composure. With a determined look, she barked orders to the crew, ensuring they maintained control of the ship despite the relentless turbulence. John Mitchell, living up to his moniker of Braveheart, joined the efforts. He and the crew worked tirelessly to secure the ship's stability. It was a battle against the elements, a struggle to retain dominion over the vessel they had come to cherish. But the common minka whale, driven by forces known only to itself, was unrelenting in its assault. Time and again it emerged from the depths, its colossal body colliding with the ship's hull with an earth-shattering impact. The aurora shuddered, and the crew's determination wavered as the sea monster's fury raged on. It was as if the common minky whale had become a force of nature, a disruption of the deep that defied all expectations. The sailors, once captivated by its serene beauty, now faced a relentless and unforgiving adversary. The battle between sailors and sea creatures raged, a struggle that would test their mettle and resourcefulness. The common minky whale, a creature of grace and peace, had become a formidable foe, and the fate of the Aurora hung in the balance. The common minka whale, undeterred by the crew's resistance, continued its relentless assault. With each breach, it seemed to grow more determined, as if it harbored a personal vendetta against the Aurora. The very nature of the attack defied explanation. Amidst the tumultuous battle, tragedy struck with a crushing blow. One of the crew, a seasoned sailor known as Samuel Sam Davies, found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. As the common minka whale again breached, its colossal body struck the ship's hull with unparalleled force. The impact was devastating. Sam Davies, caught amid the chaos, was thrown overboard by the sheer violence of the collision. He disappeared beneath the churning waves, his fate sealed by the relentless fury of the sea creature. The crew of the Aurora could only watch in horror as the unforgiving sea claimed their comrade. They had fought bravely against an adversary they could never have foreseen, and now they had to confront the heart-wrenching reality of their loss. Emily Turner, her eyes filled with sorrow, called for the crew to cease their struggle. It was a moment of mourning for their fallen comrade, to honor the sacrifice of a sailor who had braved the storm alongside them. John Mitchell, Braveheart no more, lowered his head in solemn remembrance, 
The sea had taken one of their own, and it was a stark reminder of the ever-present perils of a sailor's life. In the Straits of Gibraltar, a group of sailors found themselves amid an extraordinary and dangerous situation. The sailors, known for their resilience and tenacity, had embarked on a journey across these waters, lured by the tales of adventure and the beauty of the sea. Little did they know that they were about to face a formidable adversary, a group of killer whales, their peaceful demeanor shattered by a newfound aggression. Among these sailors, Captain Jack Thompson stood at the helm, a seasoned mariner with a rugged face etched by the sun and salted by the sea breeze. His crew comprised diverse individuals, each with a story and a shared love for the open waters. Sarah, the ship's first mate, was known for her unwavering determination and keen instincts. James, the ship's navigator, possessed an uncanny ability to read the winds and waves. Finally, young Daniel, the deckhand, was eager to prove his mettle in the maritime world. Their vessel, the Emerald, gracefully cut through the waves guided by the skillful hands of Captain Thompson. It was a sunny day in July 2022, and the sailors reveled in the beauty of the Straits of Gibraltar. The azure waters seemed to stretch endlessly, promising a tranquil voyage. As they sailed through these historic straits, they couldn't help but feel the weight of the legends surrounding these waters. Tales of maritime adventures and encounters with creatures of the deep had always intrigued them. However, they had no clue that their own story would soon be etched into the annals of maritime lore. Unbeknownst to them, the straits had become problematic in recent years. The tranquility of these waters had been disrupted by a growing menace killer whales. The sailors heard whispers of these encounters, tales of boats being damaged and sunk. White Gladys, the female orca believed to be the orchestrator of these attacks, was a name they had grown wary of. This mysterious leader had reportedly taught her pod to target vessels, causing chaos among the maritime community. The sailors had been cautioned by the Orca Project team leader, John Burbeck, who had advised them on a peculiar yet essential defense mechanism. They carried bags of sand, a seemingly unassuming solution, but their lifeline against the impending threat. Burbeck echoed in their minds, it doesn't have to be a lot of sand. The orcas are coming in on sonar, not sight. We know that. And sand around the rudder confuses that sonar picture they're picking up. As they continued their journey, a sense of unease settled over the crew. They had seen these majestic creatures earlier in their voyage at a distance, breaching and playing in the waves. But now, the orcas were closing in, their intent unclear and their aggression palpable. The sailors were about to face an ordeal that would test their mettle and their ability to adapt in the face of nature's fury. The sailors aboard the Emerald watched with growing concern as the orcas closed in. These once majestic creatures had turned into relentless adversaries, their black and white bodies slicing through the water with precision. Sarah, the first mate, was the first to react. She grabbed the bags of sand and rushed to the ship's stern. With a swift, practiced motion, she scattered the sand around the rudder. As the grains dispersed into the water, she hoped that John Burbeck's advice would hold. Captain Jack Thompson barked orders to the crew, urging them to bang pots and pans on deck creating a cacophonous symphony reverberating through the hull. The goal was to confound the orca's sonar further, creating a disorienting and noisy barrier around the vessel. The orcas, however, were undeterred. Their attacks were relentless and calculated. With astonishing force, they headbutted the vessel's rudder, their powerful bodies slamming against the ship's vulnerable appendage. The emerald shuddered under the assault, its timbers creaking in protest, James, the ship's navigator, desperately tried to steer the vessel away from the orcas, but their agility and coordination made it nearly impossible to evade them. The orcas seemed to anticipate every move, turning the encounter into a deadly dance of predator and prey. The crew's determination wavered as the attack continued, and fear gnawed at their resolve. The orcas showed no sign of letting up, their aggression escalating. Each blow against the rudder felt like a strike to the heart of the sailors' hopes and dreams. The orca's sonar, distorted by the sand and the clanging of pots and pans, only seemed to intensify their aggression. It was as if they were determined to overcome these obstacles and reach their elusive goal. Hours passed and the crew grew weary. The orcas showed no signs of fatigue, and the ship's rudder bore the brunt of their relentless assault. 
It was a battle of attrition, and the sailors were acutely aware of the stakes. As the Orca assault persisted, the sailors steeled themselves for a long, difficult night. Once a place of wonder and adventure, the Straits of Gibraltar had transformed into a battleground, and the crew of the Emerald would need every ounce of their courage and cunning to emerge from this deadly encounter unscathed. Gradually, the Orca's aggression began to wane. The blows against the ship's rudder became less frequent and less forceful. It was as if the predators had realized that their prey would not succumb easily. The first light of dawn broke over the horizon, casting a new hope on the Emerald. Perhaps sensing that their relentless pursuit had met its match, the Orcas finally relented. They turned and swam away, their sleek forms disappearing into the ocean's depths. The crew of the Emerald let out a collective sigh of relief. They had endured a night of peril, a battle against nature's mightiest hunters. They had stood their ground, defended their vessel, and emerged from the ordeal with their lives and ship intact. The sailors looked out at the tranquil waters as the sun rose, illuminating the Straits of Gibraltar. The sea, which had been a battleground, was now a symbol of their resilience and bravery. They had faced the relentless Orca assault and emerged victorious. Still gripping the ship's wheel, Captain Jack Thompson turned to his crew with a proud and grateful smile. They had weathered the storm together, and their bond had grown stronger.